Good morning all. So I've been a bit spoilt, I think, the last few years, having the house to myself during the day. It's been very nice and quiet. But not now, because in this time of stay at home, I'll just check uh, the battery here. Oh, that's down to one bar that I'll need changing. Uh, the house is busy and uh, I'm finding I can't concentrate very well making videos. So I thought for this one I'd retreat to the shed so yes I'm in the shed now if you're wondering what that noise is it's this and I've never had an opportunity to show this in a video so that's what I'm going to do today it's a bizarre little 12 volt powered heater and it's running from the 12 volt output jack of this power oak uh, power bank and I don't know whether you can uh, see the display there but it's drawing, or oh, maybe I can light that up. Yeah, it's drawing a uh, hundred watts, almost exactly. Now, quite honestly, it would have been much more convenient to use this uh, little heater, but this one is 150 watts, and that's just a little bit too much for the power bank. Uh, this thing, it just can't sustain 150 watts at 12 volts because that's well greater than the 10 amps that this socket is rated at and uh, just an error message comes up on the display let's show that so I'll plug this thing into there switch on the box and then switch on the DC and this comes on briefly and it's drawing and then there's an error message can we see that error message e20 which essentially means overload of the 10 amp 12 volt output so that didn't work and then i thought well i've got these other heaters which are bizarre things so these um were being sold by maplin oh a few years ago uh which way is it is that way yeah um as sort of defrosters for your car and this is completely self-contained. It's got two uh, six volt sealed lead acid batteries in there. Uh, it's got a little clock module so that you can set a timer. So you could conceivably put this in your car just in the windscreen area on the dashboard, set the timer for 7 a.m. or something. This will come on and defrost your windscreen. Now I made a video about this on a particularly cold frosty day, but it was on the old iPod. This was years ago, it was probably eight nine years ago and i cannot find that footage so i can't show you that unfortunately but this is utterly hopeless it's only 100 watts and all it did was just produced a little square gap in the windscreen so that you could barely see out so these things were just awful but for my purposes now just having a little source of heat in the shed so i can just warm my hands when they get cold they're they're kind of adequate um now the two sealed lead acid uh, gel batteries in here, two six volt batteries in series, have long since sulfated and stopped working. So it won't run off the internal batteries, but there's a socket on here, which says input 12 volt, eight amps. And I've got the cable, which was supplied with this unit with its sort of strange shaped DC connector so that you don't get plus and minus the wrong way around. And that, as I say, draws about 100 watts off this unit, and this unit can sustain that. But there's no way to switch this on, because you switch it on, you put it on heat or cool. There's a fan setting without the PTC heater, and it just doesn't do anything because it needs the internal batteries to sort of fire up the switching system, which is this little display and so that the relays pull in so that it can take power from this cable and of course the 12 volt batteries inside here are shot so i had to think of a way around this and it came in the shape of one of these transformers i don't think it's the actual correct one but i'll plug that into the mains part of this power bank switch on the ac so that this is putting out it's about 17 volts i think plug that into the charge port and then at least the electronics comes on the little clock module comes on now you have to press and hold plus 
for the fan unit to come on but it still doesn't come on and the reason for that is because the fan won't come on when you're charging the internal batteries of course they don't charge I've put this on charge for hours and they just don't charge anymore they're completely shot so then I took this out put it back in again press plus to get that to on and just sort of blipped it and now it's not playing ball, is it? Oh, it was doing this earlier on. You just had to blip it and it would come on. Now it won't. Ah, I worked out what was wrong. Uh, this was in still in error mode, so it wasn't actually putting DC out of the DC outlet. So this should now work. Press and hold plus to turn it on. A relay pulls in, but it doesn't fire up. And then after a couple of blips, away it goes. And we have glorious 100 watts of heat output. So I'll just turn off the power bank and uh, I'll go and get a screwdriver and we'll have this thing apart. So the first thing one must do is remove this uh, adjustable stand, which I'd actually already taken off if you're wondering why it wasn't there previously uh, then there are six screws now one of them actually sheared off um, it was so tight in the plastic pillar that instead of the plastic pillar breaking which you'd normally expect the head of the screw broke old stuff just behaves in mysterious ways doesn't it get all these screws out two up no that's the one that broke that's right and then this one should be the last one. Now there's a little um, CR2032 clock battery, but this looks like it was a bit of an afterthought. Part, partly because there's this sort of square thing there, which I don't know, looks like a bit of an afterthought. And also, why won't that come off? Have I left a screw in? Yes, I have. Also, because when you take this bottom off, You've got this really thin wire, uh, which goes up to a sort of welded in battery holder there, runs down underneath the boards. So I think it's soldered on on the bottom. And I just get the feeling that was put on later on and they remolded this, this base. But anyway, that's just my thought. So here are the two uh, sealed lead acid six volt batteries. Let's pull these wires off and take these out. They're stuck in with some double-sided tape. They do come out. So there they are, two uh, six volt, five amp hour, uh, sealed lead acid gel batteries. And they look in really nice condition, but uh, they're not. They're completely shot. And then the rest of this is just sort of, there's a basic electronics board here, but there's not much on it. I'll try and get in a bit closer in a moment. It's just kind of resistors, diodes, some transistors for driving these two uh, relays. And that's about it, really. So connected to that is a sort of switch bay here. That's the LED light switch, the fan on and off and the cool or heat, the input for charging the lead acid batteries. There's the PTC heating element. Uh, this is... Um, yeah, this wire's a real nuisance because it stops me pulling this away from the top part. Here's a, a cigarette lighter output, which I can't turn this to show you very well, but it's just a 12 volt DC accessory outlet. Oh, that's kind of come loose from its mountings now. Let's put that back in. Um, and there's a little LED light there, which I can probably show if I connect the power to this. Perhaps I'll do that and I'll also get in a bit closer, I think. Right, let's plug in this. Now this um, is a transformer based power supply. It's not the one that came with it actually. I've got those. They're in this bag of accessories where there are lots of these uh, high power DC cables, DC charging cables, which I'll just get one of those out, which is just cigarette lighter to 2.1 millimeter cable. So all this stuff came with these things 
I, I have more than one of these, I have to admit, because I bought one from Maplin, and then I saw a guy on eBay selling them really cheap, so I bought two more. I know, a bit crazy. So if I plug that in, I can probably get the LED light to come on. Yeah, there it is. It's just two uh, cool white LEDs on a little board with a resistor. I can't remember the value of the resistor now, but they're being overdriven now because they're not being held down by the lead acid batteries. So this is running at the full 17 volts or whatever's going in there. So the main components, I suppose, are, well, there's the big um, outlet 12 volt socket there, the PTC heater. Now there's a little polyfuse there. Um, I think in series with this outlet so that you can't draw more than 10 amps from that. So that must be a 10 amp polyfuse. There's a little thermal switch here, which is wired in series with the PTC heater. So that if you uh, block the airflow to the fan, which is through that vent there, uh, this will eventually warm up and warm the switch and then that presumably will cut out. I didn't actually block the airflow for long enough to test that, but that's surely how that works. Uh, as I say, there's a switch uh, panel here and then on the board there are these two relays. Now I think the way this is intended to work is that this thing switches on from its internal batteries and then when they get low, this something on this board detects that these batteries are low and another relay flips over to the external socket, which is this, which you plug into your cigarette lighter. Now, as far as I know, most cars' cigarette lighters are off when the ignition is off. But of course, this thing will only continue to defrost your windscreen if your accessory socket stays on when the ignition is off. And that's probably one of the uh, downsides of this unit. But what a bizarre thing, a defroster for your car with a little clock timer on it, um, which just doesn't really have enough guts to properly defrost the windscreen. So uh, yeah, surely they didn't sell many of these. Hands up if you bought one. So let's put this thing back together. Uh, these batteries go in there. Now I was looking on CPC Farnell um, for these batteries and I noticed that they're actually really cheap. So I've bought a pair of these batteries. They're about five pounds each. And CPC Farnell have an eight pound deli uh, free delivery threshold. So I thought, oh, that's pretty good. So I will fit this out with two brand new batteries because they're not expensive. I was thinking of other possibilities like putting a lithium pack in here, but then you've got the problem of housing it and all the BMS and the fact that the voltages don't quite match up with lead acid. Um, and it would be fairly expensive. Then I thought super caps, but that would last about 10 seconds. Uh, so when I saw that these were a five ridge, I thought, well, let's get to two new ones. Okay, let's put this lid back on. Now I've got to make sure I don't trap wires. Let's try not to trap that clock wire. And uh, put some screws in it. Start with the uh, centre screws, I think. And now, of course, I only have five screws. screws. But as I say, I've got two more of these heaters. They're in the other shed, the well-ventilated shed. So the state they're going to be in. Well, I suppose this one was in there as well. It just needed a bit of brushing down. Right, I'll just put the other screws in. Right, so if I can power this thing uh, back up, put the DC plug in, make sure the DC is on on the power unit. Okay, that's on. Uh, switch on the fan and the heat, that's on, but of course the panel's not on, so I need my charge cable. Briefly plug that in to get the electronics to come on. Press and hold the on, relay kicks in, and it's on. And we have 100 watts of lovely Let's just try and get this shed slightly warmer than it is. Heat. So what's it like filming in the shed? Well, it's a bit cramped. Uh, if you look at the floor, that's my tripod. And uh, there's just stuff piled up everywhere. Of course, I've got my uh, vent fan now. And actually, if I switch on the remote, the vent fan comes on so I can keep this uh, place much drier than it was I'll turn it off because it's a, a tad noisy 
But uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how much filming I'm going to be able to do in the shed, just really because of uh, lack of space. But um, possibly I can uh, rearrange things in here and get it a little bit more uh, compacted away so that there's more space to move. But uh, anyway, for the moment, that's the video on the, the funny Maplin heater. Cheerio.